All right, so for those of you that saw this before, we're coming back at you with some more rock and roll trivia. Krista brought in these great cards and we had a great discussion last time and we're gonna go through some more stuff and see if we can get stumped and see if there's any other I'm fun, sure. crazy. It, actually, what good. it is is just to let me babble on for <laughs> a while. So since this is what they go through every day mm -hmm. here anyway. What's that? I think we need to call it Rock and Roll Trivia Deep Tracks. Deep Tracks! <laughs> All right, Krista. Okay, let's, let's go. Do this. Here we go. Um, which rock group wrote the theme track to the 1980 movie Flash Gordon? I know that. Flash! Ah! Uh, he yeah, saved yeah. every one of us! You remember the song? Do you know? I don't you really gotta remember. You got to remember that is. song. Oh my gosh. This is huge. I'm too young. No, no, no. <laughs> this this is super important. Okay? No, you don't know who this is. No, you know why it's important? I mean, just you know, so, okay, this this is one of the biggest selling bands of all time. Duran Duran? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and, and not only one of the biggest selling bands of all time, but they just did a rockumentary on them recently, which sold like a hundred billion dollars. I mean, it was crazy huge. Everybody saw it too. I bet you saw, everyone of you saw this movie about this particular band within yes. this Queen? last year. Yes. Why did I not know this? Yes. I Queen. know now. I know now. Okay. Wake it was yep. anyway. Queen. That was morning. Queen that did Very that too. Good. Yeah. I, sh and I, I remember, have remembered oh, that. Wow. So did you ever? Yeah. Did you see the movie? Because yeah. Flash Gordon was a was yeah. an old from like the twenties or thirties, yeah. black yeah. and white. My oh. dad. So this is so funny. Yeah, My dad. This is before VCRs. Anything. This is back in the seventies. Every once in a while, he would go rent a movie projector. Oh. When we had one for our little super yeah. and stuff, but he'd rent a, a like a movie projector and rent Flash Gordon movies. And we'd go down in the basement and he'd put up this movie projector and we'd watch Flash Gordon. And you want to talk about bad. But I mean, it was at the time, <laughs> right? But I mean, these spaceships that you can see the little wires, you know, <laughs> but I taking it through amazing space. Then, right? but, but you know, I'm this kid. You know, Flash Gordon. So when the movie came out, I got super excited. And then Flash we throw Gordon. Queen. When I found yeah. out the Queen was doing uh -huh. the, That's the song, better. you know, I was all yeah. rock kid at that point because I'd been, I, I, I was to, I was big time into music at that point because I discovered Kiss a few years earlier, mm -hmm. and so now I was everything rock related. So that was a big deal to me. That the was a Flash good one. Now it's coming back. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's see. Let me see if I can stump you on any of these. <laughs> okay, how about this one? What is the name of the 1991 Spin Doctors album that features the hit Two Princess? Princes. Princes. Two Princes. And you know it because know you know what? I don't know that I know the, the name of the album though. They had a couple of hits on that album too. And Went to Princess Neil before you. That's what I said now. Princess, Princess who adore you. Yeah. Anyway, that's the that's they had so, they had another hit on that album. I don't know what it's and, called. And think, it was, think, I, think, I feel think. like in order to know that you would have to be a Spin Doctors fan. I don't think yeah, so. Nobody's well, a yeah, Spin you know, Doctors hey, fan. Uh, hey, 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 hang on a second, because I I, I do know. Spin Doctors. I'm searching for it because I swear I should know this, and it seems, I'm sure as soon as you say it. I'm gonna start. But I don't think I ever it. owned How it. How about though. I give you a clue? So it's what kills Superman's powers. Kryptonite. Oh, Kryptonite. pocket full of kryptonite. Is yeah. that what it was? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I knew I just said as soon as you say something, well, I, I do it. Pocket, <laughs> pocket full of kryptonite. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. They had this really amazing <laughs> bass player. The bass player was incredible. And the singer had that like red hair beard and there was yeah. something about that that I, at the time I was into that whole kind of long hair Chris Cornell grunge look and then he showed up. But the music was cool though. He had a cool voice. <laughs> All I can think yeah. about that was when a good Spin Doctors is um, uh, Little Miss King. Little Miss, King. Little Miss King. King. Yeah. yeah. King. Little Miss, Little Miss bitches go. Little Miss, Little Miss, Little Miss can't be wrong. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was the other song. Yeah, yeah. I love that, that was cool stuff. Yeah. Let's see if we can do this one. In Pulp Fiction, which song do Uma Thurman and John Travolta dance to during the dance competition at Jack oh, Rabbit Slims? Oh, shoot. I'm gonna dance to it, but I don't remember. You know, honestly, I have crap, no, I don't crap, know. Crap. I don't know the song. You don't know I remember, the song? I remember the song, uh, but I don't know who it was. Well, I know it, because I'm, 
I'm, you have the answer. I have the answer. <laughs> I love this movie, and I was when just dancing to it. You never can tell by Chuck Berry. <laughs> well, I don't. That was a I Chuck Berry tune. Yes. I just see the. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Chuck yep. Berry is a is is an amazing story in and of himself. You know, he would tour even up until you know the end of his life. He would go into town. And he would basically, a band would be there waiting for him. He didn't even tour the band. He'd just drive around from town to town. There'd be people there. And oh, he'd just wow. start playing. And they'd just have to keep up with him. That's awesome. But, you know, he really, he, he revolutionized. He had that duck walk, mm -hmm. which you'd see things like Angus Young from ACDC would do the same kind of look on the stage. And, and Chuck Berry, man, he, he anyway, he was, uh, he was a big deal. Big so, deal. He That's pretty cool. Well, he, had, he, had a, he had a bunch of, he had a bunch of hits. It wasn't yeah, like yeah. just one thing. I mean, that was a hit. Yeah. He had so of course he had Johnny Be Good that yeah. was huge but but then what was the one uh, about the uh, get me on the line oh dang it I can't think of what it was but there's a, there's actually a documentary where uh, <laughs> Keith Richards <laughs> oh. interacts with them and Chuck Berry I mean because they were worshipped you know yeah. Chuck Berry was yeah. was the you know was super important to them him and Elvis and others and and you see this documentary where it looks like Keith Richards gets like, frustrated with him because he's Kind of in his own world, Chuck Berry was. He was, yeah. uh, he was huh. awesome. Anyway, awesome. I didn't mean to go off on okay, that. Okay, let's so I don't do know. one more. Which song is not featured on the ACDC um, Back in Black album, Highway to Hell, Hell's Bells, or You Shook Me All Night Long? So which that one's song? Easy. You guys know that one's no, so it's super not easy. featured. But it's kind of a trick for it's kind of a oh trick for gosh. a reason. I mean, <laughs> it's, it, a, it's trick a tricky question. question because of the order in which these albums were put out. So you have to guess: Highway to Hell, Hell's Bells, or Shock Me All. You night shook me all night long. long. You guys know all three of these songs. Yes. Yeah, we know the so, song. So Highway to Hell, it's not. It's Highway to Hell was not on that album. Hell's Bells was. So Highway to Hell was on a different right. album with a different singer. Yep. So Highway to Hell was you know, on an album. The singer, that was the last time Bon Scott was, so that, so Bon Scott, they did the album Highway to Hell, and it was, so then Bon Scott died. Bon Scott was the most amazing rock singer <laughs> ever. I mean, the dude was incredible. But here's what's so fascinating about this. So, so... ACDC had had Bon Scott, and he, you know, he became this just notorious rock singer for years and years. Everybody knew Bon Scott was. I mean, ACDC was huge. Highway to Hell, one of the greatest rock anthems in the history of rock and roll. I mean, you can't beat that song, can you? I no, mean, I'm I on can't. a highway to hell. No stop sign, speed limit. Nobody's gonna slow me down. I mean, it's just a great tune. There's nothing better than that. But here's what's so incredible. So, so. They do that incredible stuff. How do you possibly do any better than this? And then Bon Scott dies. Oh, that's sad. They find him. He he like choked on his vomit or something. It was just one of these things. He's drunk. He was always drunk. And and this. Oh. Well, then, then, instead of breaking the band up, I actually have a video online about this oh story. So yeah, it, it's in my one of my thick and mystic moments. I talk about the ACDC, or maybe it's my son that does it. But it, it so. So they go find this guy named Brian Johnson, who's kind of a nobody. He sings for this band called Jordy. And, and he, they, you know, they're whatever, nobody really cares. And so they, audi they audition this guy, and then they record, down in something like Jamaica, they go record this album called Back in Black, which is what you're talking about mm -hmm. right there. And, and Brian Johnson, like, he just does everything he can. He didn't even think he did a great job. And it ends up being one of the top selling albums of all time. Because it came out, was it, 1980, right? Oh my right? gosh, yeah. So, so, the, so it, it, you know, one of the only other albums that rivals it is one we talked about last time, which was Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf. And right. that was one of the top selling albums of all time, too. Yeah. But Back in Black, and it was like, they had hit after hit after hit. The, the song Hell's Bells, everybody in the world knows that song, the way that song begins. Na, 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 na. You got me ringing, Hell's Bells. No, anyway, and then, and then the song Back in Black, Everybody knows that song. You Shook Me All Night Long. Mm -hmm. Name a song in the world that's more popular than everybody knows that song. Yeah. You Shook Me right. All Night Long. Yeah, and then song after song after song. So for them, what was so fascinating, instead of hanging it up when Bon Scott died, they went back in the studio 
And where a lot of bands that just kills them off and they barely survive after that, they actually moved up oh, and wow. they became even bigger than That's they had awesome. with Bon Scott. It was, it's an incredible story because they put out this album, you know, Back in Black, which was basically their idea of we're returning, we're back in black. And, and, and it was after, after they'd lost kind of the, you know, the, the, the sound. And, uh, and to bring Brian Johnson in, who ended up being a great... I still prefer Bon Scott as far as the, just my preference on who sounds more interesting. <laughs> yeah. He has a really interesting voice. Yeah. But Brian Johnson, you know, the guy... The, that album, Back in Black, maybe, in my opinion, is probably the greatest rock album ever recorded. I, 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 sorry, I didn't mean to go... I That's just awesome. that, that album... <laughs> I didn't mean to, I just can't... It's so great. I can't... Help this it. is all the history we get. All the history we get. Anytime anybody mentions anything. <laughs> Sorry. That actually okay. makes sense because I didn't know that. And listening to the Sue 2 songs, they sound like two different singers. I just thought it was because it was an older album. Yeah, totally, like totally different guys. I mean, if you go back to the song TNT, because I'm TNT, I'm Dynamite, Dynamite. that's Bon Scott. Oh, okay. And it, you, actually, mo I'd say that over the years, yeah, he, they had so many hits back then. Uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. That's that's Bon Scott as well. So there's a lot of... Matter of fact, if you ever watch School of Rock, you hear that song at the very end, and that's an old Bon Scott ACDC <laughs> tune. I'd go on for a long time about them, but yep. let's move yeah. on. Okay, should we do another <laughs> one here? Okay, let's see if... I'm trying to stomp. This is the thing. I'm going Well, you got me on the... I've got to stomp. Stomps. The, the, the stomp whatever. The a little one. bit. Yeah. The one. But... Um, <laughs> how about this one? The Who's Christmas was a song on which album? What? I have no idea. The Who's Christmas? The Who's Christmas was a song. Are you talking about the Witch band? Album? Wait, you're talking about the Who, the band The Who. Yeah, it says The Who's Christmas. I don't have it's any idea. It's called Christmas idea. was a song on which album? I had no idea they had a song called Christmas. You know how they had a song no, called no Christmas? Idea. No, oh, we no lose. clue. Oh, no. <laughs> Tommy. That was on Tommy. Oh, right. I don't okay. even know Tommy. Tommy actually became, is know. actually something that's Someone. on. Well, Tommy's a Tommy is, is kind of like almost like a concept album, but I mean it was a play. They that thing's performed. As to say, isn't it live? Opera. Yeah, it's it, well, and they and the Who did several things like that, where they had these big concept things like Quadrophenia and what have you. But Tommy mm -hmm. was one of them. And matter of fact, in Tommy, if I'm not mistaken, that's the one where Elton John did Pinball Wizard. I think that's Tommy. Yeah. So the song Pinball yeah. Wizard, and and if you watch the movie, you'll actually see. Elton John. I think he's the one that, yeah, that actually Elton does John. it in the yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. so. The only one I know is uh, American Woman. <laughs> American, <laughs> American Woman. So that's, that, so, uh, but, you're, but actually, that's the Guess Who. Oh, so oh. It's, two, it's actually two different bands. Isn't that weird? So the Guess oh, Who yeah. actually is a band out of Canada. Oh, yeah. And and they had and they're singing about American woman. American woman, stay away from me. Okay, okay, okay. But this is but this is important. <laughs> but so what's interesting about the Guess Who? <laughs> you know the song, right? You know the song American Woman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the Guess Who came out of Canada, and 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 they they actually broke. Uh, one of the guys named Randy Bachman left the band and started another band that you guys have heard of before. Which is called Bachman Turner Overdrive. <laughs> They're called Bachman Turner Overdrive, and the reason I know you've heard of them is you heard one of their biggest hits, which was "Taking Care of Business Every Day." Yeah, Taking that was Bach Randy. That was Randy Bachman from yep. the Guess Who, Randy Bachman. creating a band called Bachman Turner Bachman. Overdrive. Okay, oh. rock on. So I didn't know the answer. I didn't know they had a song. <laughs> I didn't really even think song. I owned Tommy. I don't think I own that one. I was I never a huge Who about. fan, but but I tell you. You, it, it's hard to beat. Oh my gosh! I, I, the, oh, my the, the, <laughs> oh my gosh! I'll stop. <laughs> I, I just remember. One. I remember the first time I saw the song "Who Are You." That was the first time I really oh. became acquainted with the Who. And when you and I see, I only know that from what TV shows. When you see Ed Whistle playing his bass. Matt Singer has it on right now. He, oh, the Matt They're, Singer. Anyway, they were before that. They knocked like, me over with how great. Their, anyway, I'll stop. Might have been, yeah. Next. <laughs> okay. Hollywood Rose and L.A. Guns joined forces in 1985. 
<laughs> well, it's easy. You can figure it out just by the... To become a witch heavy metal band. Motley Crue. It's easy to figure out just from <laughs> Guns and Roses. Okay. Yeah. Guns and Roses. That's Rose. what I was They said Rose. Yeah, yeah it's Guns L.A. Guns. That's your stuff now. She's got Guns and Roses. There you go, Guns and Roses. And roses. <laughs> okay. And, were, and, and how do you beat Guns... I mean, they were... They just kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and I they... I was reading a book on Guns and Roses. Yeah. They were so awesome. That's how, so you knew that, the history? Yeah, a little history, yeah. <laughs> they, they were getting together sometimes, I guess. Yeah. I'm, I know you, you guys are going to know But this. you know who, interesting thing about Guns N' Roses that I would just, and I'll only bring this up because it just came up a couple days ago and something else. When they were doing, so when they lost Ace Frehley, because he was the original Kiss, sorry, Kiss, when Kiss lost Ace Frehley, and they were going through this big guitar turnover. They went through a few different guitars. One of the guys that auditioned, believe it or not, for Kiss was a little kid that later called himself Slash. Oh. Ooh, Guns N' Roses. Yes. And and he was, and uh, Paul Stanley, when he tells the story, goes, he was just a kid. He was like, he's way too young to even be in our band, but the guy was amazing. And so, yeah, Slash was an incredible guitar player. And then he kind of had that iconic look ever since then that, you know, you know Slash and you see him, that hair yeah. in his face, the, you know, the hat. Anyway, yeah, Guns N' Roses. That's an awesome, good question. That's a good one. All right. This is going to probably be easy. Do the last well. one? Yeah, last one. We'll okay. We'll, okay. According to her 1963 song, if you saw Dion Warwick start to cry, when walking down the street, what should you do? Well, I don't know what that means. Can you read that one? So, one? according I'm to her something. 1963 song, it's in her song, if you saw Dionne Warwick start to cry when walking down the street, what should you do? I... <laughs> I actually know I this know. one. I don't know. Which is I, so I, funny. I know who Dion Warwick is. She was the solid gold host for yeah. a long time. And, and, but yeah, you don't know her songs? I don't know. I, very do you few. want to give her a tissue? I only know. Do you I, want I, to give I her a hug? One, I know one song no. from no. her. And I really like that song. It's uh, Heartbreaker. Mm hmm. But I don't know. It's but, Walk On By. Walk On By. Walk oh, on yeah, by. yeah. I, yeah. I, know. I don't know. I was going to say Walk Away mm. before, but. Walk Away. I was like, close mm, enough. Yeah, no. Pretty close, though. That's not <laughs> what I would do. I would help. <laughs> well, we stumped you at Yeah, least. I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a <laughs> Dion Warwick, you start stepping into a world that I don't know a whole lot about. You would. She was, she was. Well, and then by the time she was on Solid Gold, she was way, you know. Pastor. Way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, into her career at that she point. Was. She was, and then she kind of. That's how. That's how I became introduced to her. I didn't know who she was prior to that, but she'd been famous obviously long before that. These are well, super fun. Well, this is fun. so fun, so fun. Well, thanks for joining us. Here we are at the Audio Mover Studio, where we take your old audio tapes and videotapes and turn them into digital files. We work with churches and government agencies and all kinds of organizations and individuals around the country, and we'd love to have your stuff. Uh, ship it in. Let us turn it into digital, so you have a permanent record of your stuff. And anyway, thanks for being here and we'll talk to you again soon.